Welcome to my video about how to take field notes recorded during a radial survey and input them into AutoCAD. So I've got my field notes here, so the different points that were recorded. So a radial survey starts at a point and then every other point is recorded in relation to that point. So that one starting point is point A and then all the rest of these were recorded based off of azimuth and distance and elevation in relation to point A. So this is loosely based off of figure 819 out of your textbooks. If you happen to have the civil drafting technology textbook that we're using in class, this is the eighth edition. That's on page 254. So if we go over to AutoCAD Civil 3D, I'm just going to select a new drawing. So I'm gonna use that template that we've been using in class. Once that opens up, I'm going to go to the home tab on the ribbon, click on points, click on point creation tools. That brings this little toolbar up. When that toolbar comes up, I'm going to click on this symbol over here on the right and it's going to expand out and I'm going to start with default layer. So all these points that I'm about to create, I want them to be on the V node layer. So I'll click in the cell under the value column for layer and I get this ellipsis. I'll go ahead and click on that ellipsis. It takes me out to a list of all my layers. I'll find V node. I'll select it and hit OK. Now I'll expand out points creation. So under points creation, I'm going to come down here to prompt for elevation. And I want it to be set to manual because all these points have a different elevation. So I'm going to have to type those all in as we go. So I'll leave that at manual. I'll prompt for point names. Uh, I'm not going to enter them now. I can always edit this information afterwards. So I'll leave that as none. Same thing for descriptions. I'm not going to enter it now. So I'll leave it as none. And then the last thing is default elevation. If you had a number of points that were at the same elevation, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and enter that in here. We do not, so we're just gonna leave that as zero. Come on down here to default styles. There's nothing I can change in there. Everything's grayed out. Default name format. This is which point group you want it to be assigned to. We're not gonna change anything there. And then point identity. So we're gonna start at point one and so, and then we'll increase by one point number for every point. So if you wanted to do something different, then you could specify that here in point identity. So I'll go ahead and click on that symbol again and it'll collapse it. Come on over here, click on the little arrow next to that very first icon and we want to select manual. So this first point, it's going to be point A. This is just my start point. So I'm just going to click a random point in here somewhere. My command line prompts me for my elevation. So the elevation of point A is 421.2. So I'll type that in and hit enter. And then there's my point. I'll go ahead and hit escape one time and that gets me out of that point creation command. And I'm going to just change my scale to blow this up. So I'm going to use a scale of one inch equals 100 feet. And then I'm going to create some text just to label that as being my start point. just so I don't get confused later on. All right, so that's what I've got so far. So now I'm ready for all these other points. So point one, I'm gonna come back here, click on that little arrow next to that very first icon, select manual. And then at this point, I'm come, going to come over here and find my azimuth distance transparent command. So I'll click on it. It asks me for my starting point. That's going to be the node of this point. So I don't have my node object snap turned on. So I'll come down here and turn it on. So I can pick up the node of that. It says specify my azimuth. My azimuth, azimuth is 327.52. So that's 327 degrees in 52 minutes. My distance. 372.85 feet. So I'll type that in, hit enter, then ask me for my elevation. That is 423.5 feet. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I'll hit escape once. That gets me out of my transparent command. Hit escape again. It gets me out of my point command. So right now, there's the two points that I've created. Now I'm ready for my next point. So I'll just come back up here, click on that little drop list arrow, select manual. Come back over here, find my azimuth distance, transparent command. It asks me for my starting point. I'm always going to come back to that start point. So I'll click there for my start point. 
Uh, the azimuth for this one is 39 degrees and 45 minutes. So I'll type in 39.45, hit enter. Distance is 355.57 feet. And then the elevation is 418.9. So I'll type that in, hit enter. And then again, I'll hit escape to get me out of the transparent command, hit escape again to get me out of the point creation command. And then I can go ahead and create the rest of these points. So I'll go ahead and give you a minute to finish working off of this table and creating the rest of those points from point three all the way down to point 14. I'll do the same and then I'll come back and finish this up. All right, so when you get that done, it should look something like this. So we've got all of our points, so we can go ahead and close out of this point creation toolbar. So then one thing you can take a look at is over here in this tool space on Prospector tab, on your points, if you right click on points, you can select edit points and it brings up this point vista. So you can take a look at your point numbers should have 15 different points. And you obviously can't confirm the easting and northing since our start points were probably different since I just clicked a random point. But you should be able to check your elevations. And this gets us a start. So now we've got point data. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how to take this point data, create a surface out of it and generate contour lines. So thanks for watching. Be sure and save this. You'll need it for the next video. Talk to you soon.